Christ, who cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities, halt, let me stop there for a moment and make sure we understand that. We don't have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. We don't have a high priest who cannot sympathize with what we're going through. We don't have a high priest who can who is incapable of sympathizing uh, to our temptations. Why? We have a, a high priest who can and does sympathize with our weaknesses. We have a high priest who knows uh, we are flesh and blood. We have a high priest that knows that the flesh is weak. We also have a high priest that since he knows all of this, once before he laid his life down, he said, uh, and if the days were not shortened, there would be no flesh that would be saved. But for my elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. That's the high, kind of high priest we have. And another reason why, but was in all points, un, it, fathom that for a moment. In every way, shape, and form that you have ever been tempted, uh, the Lord has been there. He has been there, except he overcame everything, and he was tempted. When he was tempted, he was tempted without sin. Men, women, let me uh, explain something to you. Uh, first of all, the men. See a good look of woman, a good temptation might come. Something in there into the mind. You might mark, Jesus did not ever go there. He did not ponder on something of that nature. He never had the thought of something like that. While he was tempted in every way you and I are, he overcame it, not with his own thoughts, uh, but he overcame everything with the word of God. As God in the flesh, he couldn't sin. It was impossible for him to sin. He never pondered on thoughts like you and I, women, uh, uh, men and women, may ponder on. Boy, it's a good looking man. Look at the body on that boy. We hear it all the time. Let's be, let's be honest. Jesus never went to those kind of thoughts. He was tempted in all manner, but without sin. His mind never took over as far as a fleshly mind. Never did. It was the will of God, the word of God, and being God in the uh, flesh, he couldn't sin. How do I know this? God cannot be tempted with uh, sin uh, by evil. He can't be tempted by evil. The flesh, yes, he went through, the flesh went through all of these temptations, but he did it without sin. And that means that you and I can do the same thing. So, I sin daily. You better crumble that up, throw it in the fireplace. Don't crumble it up, throw it down. Somebody else come by, pick it up, burn that garbage. I sin daily. Well, you better get something right. Better get something right and stop that sinning daily. Let us, therefore, knowing everything we've just read, Knowing uh, way back in the uh, 40 years of the wilderness, the people, many, many of them died in the wilderness simply because they had no, uh, uh, they were disobedient unto the Lord God. Even after seeing the mighty hand of what he did, they were still unwilling uh, to be obedient. They were still unwilling to have faith in God. They are uh, the that's uh, therefore let's uh, uh, understand this. The flesh is indeed weak. Where's Moses? Don't know. Well, hey, now he just got, brought us out here. He's disappeared. Uh, we're going to need us a God to lead us over into where we're going. Uh, give me some gold. I'll make us a big calf. <laughs> Hello. Now you're going to have to carry an extra burden. That's all it is. And can you imagine it made of gold? Man, they had to be somebody that was doing some sweat. 
nothing but uh, added a burden unto him. Making God, he's a jealous God. Thou shalt have none other God before me. Making, that's why they could never ever enter into God's rest. Their own doing, their own fault. Keeping all of that in mind. Keeping in mind the high priest that we have. He's been through everything that you and I could ever face, ever go through, yet without sin. Knowing that he uh, can and is indeed uh, sympathizing uh, with our weaknesses. And that's what the infirmities is talking about. Sympathizing with all of that. Keeping all of that stuff in mind. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Let me tell you something, church. God's already, Lord, help me get through this. Give me the grace to get through this. First of all, yeah, we all say that, uh, no doubt in my mind, from time to time. But I'll tell you something. Uh, God's already given you the grace. God's already given you everything you need uh, to face anything that comes along. He reminded me of that. Uh, Peter, upon this house. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, upon this Rock, uh, not the rock that, uh, not, uh, the rock is not that Peter is the rock. The P, uh, rock is that Jesus is the Son of the living God. That is truth. That is the rock of truth right there. And upon that rock, I will build my church, Jesus said, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The hill come, the gates of hell will come against it, church, and you and I are in involved. It will indeed arise up and uh, pretend to be some great big devious whatever. Uh, some great big powerful demon. Uh, some great big monstrous evil uh, that will strike fear into the hearts of many. But understand this man of God. Understand this woman of God. He shall not prevail. Uh, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Uh, shall because it can't. If you and I uh, will stand upon the word of God, if you and I uh, will be more like our Savior uh, that saved us from the world, he has pay, uh, picking us up, uh, picked us up with his hands. He has brought us out uh, from among the filth and the disgusting uh, things of the world. He has set us over here uh, apart from the world. He has sanctified us. He has has clothed us uh, with the robe of righteousness, has he not? Uh, brother, uh, I used to uh, wear the coat of the world. Uh, they sing about uh, uh, co Joseph. Co was it Joseph? I believe his coat of many colors. Uh, uh, was it Joseph? Or jo yeah, Joseph, I believe it was. Uh, but see, it was all ripped and torn, had all kinds of colors. Uh, there's another song uh, that that uh, 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 my Aunt Evelyn sang, my mom's sister in Kentucky. I won't forget that song, By the Grace of God. I put off the old coat, and my Savior put on the new. He took the raggedy coat and the unrighteousness coat and the filthy coat of the world and his ways. He took it off from me. And just like a son uh, coming home to his dad, the lost prodigal son, uh, my son has come home. He once was lost, but now he's found. Uh, bring the best robe that you have and put it on him. Uh, brother, that's the way Jesus is towards you and I. He don't call us his servant. He calls us his son. He don't call us his uh, slave. He calls us his daughter. Uh, you are a daughter of the Most High King, young lady. Uh, you are a son of the great I Am, young man. And if the gates of hell uh, think they can prevail against it, uh, the Lord God, uh, my King and your King, has already assured me uh, they may come against it, uh, but it will not uh, prevail. Uh, many people, do they not? They visualize uh, what Satan must be 
Eli. Uh, they visualize this big, a uh, massive, powerful thing that's full of evil and full of authority. Uh, but church, I'm going to bring him down uh, to where he needs to be. He's not that big and powerful at all. As a matter of fact, he has no authority uh, unless you give it to him. Uh, you have the power with your little foot uh, to stomp on his head. Uh, brother, he might bruise your heel, uh, but you have the power uh, through and by uh, God Almighty, uh, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ uh, to bruise his head uh, just like Jesus did, brother, uh, the prince of the world. It was judged uh, right there when Jesus uh, went to the cross, was it not? Uh, now the prince, the judgment of the prince of this world is come. Who's the, who's the old prince of this old world? Uh, brother, it's old Lucifer. He can have the world, uh, but he's not this big monstrous thing uh, that he puts in the minds of people. He's not full of power uh, like he causes people to think. Uh, but I'll tell you something. He's going to be right there on the left hand side uh, with the rest of the people that don't know God. He's going to bow uh, before God. Imagine this. The great big so called devil. Satan. The old serpent. Uh, Lucifer. He's going to be right there uh, just among the nations and the men and the women uh, that refuse uh, to serve God. He's going to bow down just like the world. He's going to look upon uh, just while the others are doing the same thing. And when the others are confessing with their mouth, uh, Lucifer's going to do the same thing. Lucifer knows uh, what's coming. He knows that there's no hope. He also knows uh, that, brother, uh, there is no place in the kingdom of God for him. All the prayer in the world uh, will not help him. He's a son of perdition, a destruction, uh, but he's not in charge of anything. Uh, hell is not a place uh, where one person uh, called Lucifer, uh, the great dragon, the old serpent, is in charge. Uh, brother, there's going to be wailing. There's going to be gnashing of teeth. And there's going to be a flame so hot uh, that people will be gnashing their teeth and crying and begging and pleading. Uh, but it won't even be heard. It won't be for a day. It won't be for a weekend. It will be forever and forever and forever without end. Uh, many people think uh, that they're going to spend eternity in heaven or they're going to spend eternity in hell. Uh, well, a uh, uh, preacher, that's what the Bible says. I beg to differ. Uh, uh, the, ch uh, the church will indeed uh, spend eternity in heaven, uh, but death will give up the, uh, uh, the dead. Uh, the grave, it will give up the dead, will it not? Hell uh, will give up the dead, will it not? Death, hell, and the grave will all be cast over into the lake of fire and with brimstone that burneth forever and forever and forever. We're going to spend eternity in that lake of fire without God. Total, utter darkness in pain, sorrow, suffering, begging, pleading, crying, being able to see what we're missing like the rich man did. Send Lazarus back, remembering on earth what we should have listened to versus what we did listen to. We're going to... When God says tormented day and night, that's exactly what he means. Now, notice that let us therefore come boldly unto the throne. When the Lord God was out uh, and his time had come, he told the disciples to sit here while I go over yonder and pray. <clears throat> Do you think that Jesus Christ getting ready to lay his life down for you and I. Do you think he was uh, uh, just playing? Do you think he was just uh, mumbling some words uh, uh, to be uh, praying? Absolutely not. He approached God, his father, with boldness and faith believing like you and I are taught to do. 
And he did ask. I feel a sneeze trying to come on, I think. He did ask, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. We got that first part down pat, don't we? Lord, please let this pass from me. And we get stuck right there. A lot of times we'll ask, uh, we'll say the words, but hey, not, not my will be done, your will be done. And then we want to get in God's way and try to hurry him up. Uh, Lord, I asked for this, I think a month ago, what's the hold up? God sees everything, knows every heart, has to deal with all of these people. Oh, uh, he don't have to, but he does to bring uh, what you wanted exactly at the right time to bring what you need exactly at the right time if you will have the faith to believe in God. When we pray, church, we are to uh, wipe everything out of our minds, out of, away from our thoughts. That's where the Bible says, enter ye into the closet and uh, shut that door and then pray unto your heavenly Father, uh, which will see you praying in secret and he re will reward you openly. Uh, get everything out of your mind. Uh, get everything out of your heart. Uh, center it upon God. Focus it upon God. We are to go unto the throne of God and bow ourselves down uh, like humble children and then uh, talking to our Father knowing that he already knows the need. Knowing that he already sees uh, what we we are, are uh, uh, in search of and what is needed, what's going on, sees everything and sometimes I gotta say it church, I gotta tell you uh, sometimes I don't have anything to say to my God except Lord you see my heart, you know I don't have anything uh, that can explain what I want to say uh, but look in my heart and bring it to pass according to your will and for your glory and and Lord, I just, you know, ever pray sometime and you don't ask for anything. Lord, I just want to thank you. Lord, I just want to praise you. Uh, church, there's not much of that going on. Uh, if anybody uh, ever deserved thanks, it's God Almighty. If every, if anybody ever deserved uh, praise uh, and thank you, it's God Almighty. Uh, brother, if we don't have anything to say, uh, let's give him praise. Uh, let's give him thanks uh, because he and he alone, did you get that? He alone is worthy. How many people I've often wondered uh, come into the Lord's house and they're thinking, my gosh, I wish that preacher would shut up. Uh, my belly's a growling and I hope it don't start because I said that. Uh, but many times they come in and that's what's on their mind. Boy, I would love to enjoy some food, uh, but but he can't seem to get done. Uh, I'll tell you something, church, that a man shall not live uh, by bread alone, but by every word, not part of the word, not some of the word, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. If I approach the throne of grace, which is uh, before God Almighty, and I have no faith, uh, I may as well get up, uh, because it ain't going to go to nowhere, let alone the ceiling. It won't even come up before God. It can't reach the ceiling if it can't come up before uh, the throne of God in which I'm bowing down to. Uh, but if all that, that's why we are to approach the throne of God, the throne of grace, uh, boldly, with great boldness. This is not the president I'm going to. It may or may not turn out the way he said it. Uh, he might or may not say this. Brother, this is not the preacher I'm going to. This ain't the pope I'm going to. This is the almighty God. He already sees everything. Already knows everything. And church, if, if I will in faith believing, how come there's so many people uh, that's laying 
is sick upon that bed of affliction today uh, because uh, they don't have the faith uh, that they ask God. Uh, they don't have the faith that it takes. If we have the faith of a grain, uh, many people get that wrong, don't they? Well, the Bible says if I had the faith of a mustard seed, I beg to differ. If the Bible says if you have the faith of, the, of a grain of a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, be ye removed and cast into the sea, it'll be done. And I'll tell you something, church, a lot of people want to uh, cowardly away and just say, well, you know, what kind of mountains you got in your life? God will remove them. But I'm here to say with boldness. I believe that. Yes, absolutely. Whatever's in my way, God will make a way. If he has to completely remove it, he'll do it. Sometimes I have to climb the mountain. Have to put a little work in it. Sometimes God tells me to go around the mountain. But it always gets moved if you have faith. But I'm also a firm believer of this. Literally speak to this mountain, brother, if the time is in need and calls for it, to be ye cast into the depths of the sea. I believe God has the power to do that as well. And if our faith is, help us, God. Please help us in our uh, lack of faith. Help us, Lord, because we are flesh and blood and we fail you miserably. We ask and ask and ask. The Bible says you ask and have not. I mean, you ask, but you have not. Uh, because you don't have faith. You come to the Lord, you ask, uh, uh, and you don't get it because you've asked amiss. You've asked for your own selfish pleasures, your own selfish reasons. If I'm sick, guess what? I, I do lift, I do pray for my own self uh, because, I mean, hey, somebody has to pray for old Millard. <laughs> and if I, I might be the only one, I don't know, I doubt it, I hope to pray not. But yeah, you got to lift yourself up in prayer. But uh, at the same time, I can be sick, feeling real bad, weak, can't do much of nothing, and I find myself praying for somebody else. You believe that? Find myself praying for somebody else. What's that? Exhorting each other. Lifting each other up. Encouraging each other. I might not be able to be there, but I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> the devil can't stop me from praying unto my heavenly Father, which hears me and will grant my supplication because of the need and because of the faith. He also demonstrated this a little bit uh, in the middle of the night. Everybody was in bed in this house, getting ready to wrap it up. Everybody was in bed in this house. Somebody came at the door. Open the door. <laughs> My children are hungry. We, we need something to eat. The man said, hey, go away. You see what time it is? I'm paraphrasing. It's the middle of the night. Go away. Don't bother me this time, this hour. What's wrong with you? But see, there was a great need. And he kept going back and going back. I need, I mean need. It's not uh, because of the severity of that need. This man will eventually, if the person don't give up, he will eventually get up and he will supply that need to his neighbor. How much more will God supply unto his children? You see all these little yellow sunflowers or uh, daisies outside? I see them all the, every day. Uh, they're there one day, and the next day somebody's cut them down. They, they got all burned up. But you know what? Even Solomon in all his glory was not dressed or arrayed like the lily of the fields. Like the lily of the fields. Not even Solomon in all of his glory. I don't recall reading about a man that's smarter than Solomon other than Jesus himself in the Bible. Solomon, brother, because he did not ask for wisdom, it was given to him. He asked, he prayed for his people. Uh, and he prayed, well, he did pray for wisdom. He, he prayed, Lord, show me 
how to lead these, these massive people. I'm just a child. I don't know what to do. Who, what man in the world can lead such a group of people? And he was humbled before God. And guess what he inherited also? Be, and this he didn't ask. The riches, all of these, now I got it right. He, he did inquire for wisdom. But he didn't ask for no riches. God gave that to him as well. See, there ain't nothing in the world wrong with riches. Providing you don't let it get come between you and God. Many people who have never been rich, they get rich. And I'll tell you something right now. And I'm, I'm referring to Christians. Boy, that becomes their God in a hurry, don't it? Becomes their God in a hurry. And before you know it, everything falls apart. Uh, illness is upon everybody in, in, in the family. Uh, the money just slips right through their hand. They're in worse condition uh, th now than they were when they got started, before they got it. If that's what it takes, Lord, to humble the people and bring them into your kingdom, then so be it. I, I, I'll pray it. I don't care. Anything just shy of death, because if they leave this world like that, there's no hope. So whatever it may take, just shy of death, bring it to pass to bring them to their knees. Bring it to pass to uh, get their eyes to be opened up to the truth. When we, I want to sum it up with this. <clears throat> when we approach God, let us go and approach God with great boldness, knowing that he will indeed uh, supply us with every one of our needs. And he will, all, uh, sometimes he'll supply us with their wants. You believe that? He sure will. Uh, I used to not need a car, but I, you know, seemed like I always wanted one. But now I'm in need of a car. But he gave me one when I just wanted one. And, you know, I, no doubt in my mind, I didn't thank him for it. There's been so many things he's given me that I've never thanked him for. So sometimes I just want to come and just thank him. Lord, I don't have anything to ask. I just want to thank you, bask myself in your goodness, and just praise your holy name within my heart and lift up your holy name. And that's all I do. I'll tell you what, I get wrapped up in God. Lord, have mercy. That will uh, sum it up. Don't allow any hardening to come with, into your heart uh, to make you, uh, to get you to uh, uh, cast yourself away, walk away from God. Don't do it. Stand firm and hold fast to, that's where Revelation uh, is talking about. Remember from where you have fallen. Repent because you have failed there. And come back to God and do, begin to do your first works. It all wraps up to the same thing. I'm finished. Where you at, sis? 81. We're in 81. Got to love that song. Just as I am, got to do the rest, won't you? God will do the rest. If you're able to stand, please do so. If not, that's fine. God bless.